Hello and welcome to Learn from the Experts. Learn from the Experts is presented by WBOA, which is the Women Business Owners Alliance of Pioneer Valley. I'm Susan Allen from Susan Allen Financial, and I'm here with... I'm Freda Brown, uh, owner of Divorce Financial Services, and our guest today is Jennifer Kinsman. And Jennifer, your business is? It's called ActaCare. I provide caregivers for seniors to help them stay independently in their homes. Okay, wonderful. And what is the biggest problem that seniors face getting, you know, when they are getting older and living alone? What are some of the issues that seem to be, you know, regularly come up? Well, of course it can vary, but um, some of the, the um, ones that stick out to me are forgetting to take their medications. Okay. And they might need medication reminders um, from a friend or family member or someone to come in and help them. Um, of course, there's always the danger of a fall, and um, they, seniors often don't want to admit that there's potential for a fall, but if they're not assisted in some way, that can happen, and of course, a uh, broken bone can lead to a long recovery period and mm -hmm. a lot of complications, so that's definitely a danger. And if someone is starting to have a little forgetfulness and all, they might forget to eat, and that can mean that they're not eating well. Um, they don't have a, a good diet going on and then that presents its own challenges. And those are just a few of the, the issues that might come up for seniors living alone. Okay. And if people are looking to find caregivers or help in their home, what, where should they start? What, they, what should you look for? Well, I would suggest that they um, contact their local senior center mm -hmm. and talk with them about some of the uh, caregiving companies that are in the area. And I would suggest they use somebody local and get some references and talk to people who've used this service and get a little background about what kind of services they provide and um, maybe speak with um, some of the employees there and find out what their approach is to working with seniors. Okay. And do you usually have to sign a contract or an agreement or how, how does that work as far, far as time and hours? Well, there's always a lot of paperwork in this business <laughs> um, from both sides. Um, the caregivers themselves have to sign an awful lot of paperwork, but when a client is looking to hire a caregiver, there's a, there's a smaller stack, but there, there is a contract. It's generally open-ended and just requires some notice if it were to be terminated. But the contract um, would state the, the cost and um, Together with that would be documents uh, related to confidentiality, um, stating that you know the the company would not release any information about the client, no personal information, and there are a number of other documents too. But the contract is generally open-ended, mm -hmm. and you're basically specific to the client. So if a client needs help eating, or if they need help uh, dressing or, or uh, washing, cleaning, do you do all those? those type of services are what? All of those things, yeah. The, the services can range from um, helping with preparing meals to going shopping and getting the ingredients for the meals. Um, some clients like to go out and um, be taken to their doctor's appointments. Sometimes they want to go to the park. Sometimes they want to go on a walk. Um, sometimes they want to go to the senior center and just hang out with friends. Or they might want to sit home and play cards or bingo or do puzzles. Mm -hmm. Um, have friends over, go over to friends' houses. Mm -hmm. um, they may need help with pet care. That's okay. always available. Um, they may need some help with housekeeping and laundry, and those are high on the list to take some of the pressure off the client. Okay. But those things are listed in a, a daily um, um, plan for each client. So each plan is individualized and the services would be listed. So they pick or choose? Is that how they do it? They pick what yeah, they need? Or the, do you decide? Or um, The, the company work? would generally work with the family members okay. and sometimes directly with the client. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's everybody together coming up with a list of all the appropriate services. And then flexibility is very key because something may come up and, and a caregiver would need to address that and maybe um, go out to do some errands that hadn't been on the original plan. And then that would be noted in their daily timesheet. And everything that they did with a client is listed um, in great detail. Everything the client ate, everything they um, did for the day, any occupational well, okay. therapy or physical therapy appointments or doctor's appointments, mm -hmm. um, grocery runs, all of that. Would so be. then, you know, a company would look at 
what the plan was versus what the timesheets are showing and, mm -hmm. and just stay in touch with the family about what the client seems to be needing. And is this covered by insurance for, for the um, client or do they pay that all out of pocket? Unfortunately, it's all out of pocket which makes it difficult for some people. Because it's not a medical service. It's, non, it? it's all non-medical to the point where a caregiver can take uh, a vial of pills to a client and set them next to the client with a glass of water and say, okay, it's time to take these pills now. But they can't hand the pills, you know, Directly. one by one to the client. So unfortunately, it's not covered by insurance. And that's why I would encourage family members to really look carefully at what their loved one's needs might be and maybe they don't need somebody there for eight hours. Maybe the client naps for a few hours during the day mm -hmm. and you can kind of pick and choose what would work best for a plan. Now if they needed medical would you also would you get another service to come into and work alongside them or how would that work? Sometimes that happens. Sometimes there's a visiting nurse mm -hmm. situation and it would be entirely separate it would be Correct. different, um, in this instance, it would be different companies. But um, if, if I were asked to refer them to somebody who could provide medical services, I could do that. Okay. And what are some signs that, you know, I know you said that seniors may um, need help, but what are some signs? Do you ever see like elder abuse or is that something that's common out there? Have you I have addressed not, that at all? Okay. I haven't seen it, but I have talked to all of my caregivers about it mm -hmm. and trained them on what signs to look for. And um, what I've been told about signs of abuse are when people start acting um, a little bit reclusive and um, aren't as outgoing as they used to be. Okay. Their diet may have changed. They may not be eating well. Um, they get irritable. Mm -hmm. um, they react in a significant way when somebody's name is mentioned um, who you know may have have bothered them somewhat in the okay. past and those are the signs we would look for now what are the signs of um, as being a, a, a daughter of a senior citizen okay um, although I'm almost a senior citizen I am the senior citizen in my family <laughs> but 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 um, just this week I've had had two couples come in you know with their parents you know who are in their 80s and looking for help financially for them. But they're also looking, you know, for looking for their future. What are the signs for someone who's, whose parents are still uh, living that, they're, that they need help? What, what should, um, you know, if, if my parents were still alive, what should I be looking for to see how they're, to see that they're managing okay or not okay? Well, I suppose one thing I would look at is if is their driving record and how they're how they're doing with driving. If they still have their licenses and can get around and drive safely, and you feel that they're safe drivers out there, um, that's a pretty good indicator that they're still pretty independent. Mm -hmm. um, but I would look for some any kind of forgetfulness, making sure that they're taking their medications. And if you sense that they're not taking their medications, then you might want to look at starting a you know, family system of reminders, calling them or stopping in at medication times and um, generally checking on their um, cleanliness habits, their housekeeping. If there's a pet involved, is the pet being cared for? That's always important. Um, and then that kind of brings us along to things like the safety checklist. And I, um, I think it's really important that family members or you can bring somebody in to do this, uh, do a safety assessment of the house. And it could happen at any time, but it's particularly important when someone's coming back from uh, being in the hospital or in rehab mm -hmm. and they're, they're a little bit fragile and you wanna do a really good look at the house or the apartment or wherever they're living, they may be coming back to live with you. And so you might need to do a safety assessment of your own home and just check with throw rugs, grab bars, um, sharp corners on furniture. I've found that seniors often become very attached to their things and they don't want anyone moving their things around. It mm -hmm. bothers them. And uh, so it has to be approached very gently, but you do want to make sure that you're putting them in a safe environment. And so throw rugs need to be removed. In fact, yeah. none of us should have throw <laughs> rugs. But, <laughs> but um, those are some tricky things. and. Um, like I do a 
a um, it's about a six-page survey of wow. a home just okay. to make sure that all those things are addressed. And it's optional. You know, family doesn't have to abide by it, but it's something mm -hmm. for them to consider. And how would a family know um, when do you realize that it, they need to go to the next step? That maybe in home, unfortunately, is not working for them. How do you you know what are the signs and how do you make that decision that there's more that yeah. needs to be done? That's tough. And it, and it ideally. Um, a caregiving company and the client's family are in regular touch and mm -hmm. they're noticing things, each, each side is noticing things and talking about them and there might be some key points that um, they want to touch on each time they do talk and see how things are progressing. Often I find that family members have promised a loved one they will keep them in their home as long as possible. So what they sometimes suggest and look to is maybe 24-hour care. Okay. And that, of course, gets costly. Mm -hmm. But at that point, they're weighing what is the cost of moving someone into a retirement community situation mm -hmm. versus keeping them at home. And it's a struggle, and they have to make their own personal decisions on that. And hopefully the client can also be involved in that decision. Um, but it, it, it takes time and energy, and it's very, very hard on families to go through that. Right, to just make that decision. It's really hard. Now, and when you first go in to meet a family, um, I'm assuming the seniors there, and also the, um, you know, maybe a daughter or son or another relative, is that how it's usually Usually, set up? yes. Okay, and then you make yeah. a checklist of what needs to be done, or you really talk Well, I talk try to over. talk to the senior and find out what their day is like mm -hmm. and what they'd like help with. Okay. And um, kind of start to get a picture of what their day is like and, and what they they understand would be helpful to them. And um, I may talk to the family members separately. In fact, I usually do. That might be by phone or a separate meeting, just to get a little bit more information of what their view is of what needs to be done. Um, you know, because you're dealing with things like sometimes a senior will have a car still, mm -hmm. but the family doesn't really think they should be driving it. So rather than get rid of the car, they might want to make it available for the caregiver to drive, and that way, the client doesn't feel like the car has been sold out from under them mm -hmm. and it's still there and they can still ride in it and the caregiver would drive. So yeah, there's a lot of communication necessary all along the, the process from day one. Now does at-home care ever involve anything f helping them financially as far as if paying bills? that type of thing. Is that included too or would that be a whole separate entity that they need to find? It could be but that would, um, that's a little bit over the, across the line of um, right, exactly. comfort for a lot of people and I think a lot of family members too. So usually there's a family member handling the finances. The financial part of yeah. it. And for more resources for seniors, where, where do you recommend going? Like the senior centers or is there um, specific things like on .gov that they could look for to just get information on how to help seniors take care of them, prepare the home, sure. and that type of thing. There are a lot of uh, resources available in the senior centers. Um, also, each um, county has its own uh, senior services department, and they can be contacted for a lot more details, services, um, lists of available companies out there to help in various ways. Mm -hmm. and lists of retirement homes, retirement communities. Too. Excellent, excellent. You've given us so much valuable information and anyone that has a senior in their life uh, really needs to think about how they're going to keep them in their home and keep them happy and uh, you offer a valuable service. So if you'd like to hear more about uh, what um, Jennifer does, you can contact her through our website at WBOA.org. Uh, we have a great um, directory there of all our members and uh, if you want more information on WBOA as well, uh, a lot of information on our website. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.